Okay, so we've just been upstairs and we've photographed some paintings of Elizabeth Cummings and the colours didn't come out correctly, I have to say. The, the warm orangey reds are much too cool, so uh, 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 something wrong with the camera, I suppose. But anyway, that's the best we could do for the moment. Um, now, never ask me how long acrylic paint takes to dry because we're back downstairs looking at this sample which uh, I have to make the sort of the focal point for you to understand how interactive works. And the paint still isn't dry, it's all still wet, um, even in the thinner parts. It's getting nearly dry, except the golden open of course doesn't dry, but the other colours are sort of nearly dry and it's about half an hour. now. I don't, it's partly because the Fredericks board is probably well sealed and, and the copying paper isn't sealed at all, so there would have been more moisture absorbed into the paper. And of course, if you use watercolour paper, the same thing would happen. But we also had a look at the smartphone and the, the, the humidity level today is 74 and it was drier two days ago when I did this experiment. So uh, it's partly the weather as well, because uh, as you get into the 70s, you're not too far away from the 80s where the whole uh, drying time for acrylic paints changes dramatically because of the, uh, the, 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 the atmosphere being laden with moisture is not able to encourage evaporation of water from the paint itself. That's what causes that. So we just have to wait a little bit and, and come back to this. I have in my hand a, a half empty bottle of holding gel, which has about the same consistency as the thick painting medium, which is served up here in a jar, but it will also be packed in a bottle. It is just liquid enough to get out of the bottle but if you do that with either of them they're rather slow to move down so you need to give them a thump to bring the, the paint bring the medium to the nose of the bottle and if you're storing it overnight store it on its nose and and it'll be ready to use so okay i'm going to take some of the medium out of the jar that the sample was sent to me in. So, so this thick painting medium, which is the newest medium and most exciting to, to my mind, that ties everything together from thick through to the medium viscosity, which we've already got in the clear painting medium. This, I think, is going to be the connecting link. And it will sit on the palette and it's very easy to blend with colour. I usually go about half half. The point and is that the paint is much brushier and more paintly than it would normally be coming straight from the tube. So I'll keep going and put some white in it. Uh, um, move around quite rapidly, I think, so I'm not really trying to do a painting, I'm just trying to show you what paint does. It's going to be more interesting to get um, a sample piece that has some underpainting so that I can come back and scrape through and show you what's underneath. That's, as you could see from Elizabeth Cummings' paintings, it's something that she does a lot of. And, and it's uh, a way of getting a very interesting textured surface to a painting. So there you've got a much gushier, paintier paint than you would 
normally have if you just use the paint by itself. Now, I know a lot of people don't use mediums because they're kind of frightened of them. They sort of don't know what they do. So they keep away from them, which is natural enough. Um, and I, I think the video camera is a terrific way of actually finding out what things do. Um, and then you can decide whether you want to try to do it yourself or not. You, you might think this is a terrible mess. And I'm not really saying it's a thing of beauty, but you can see how I'm able to get uh, wet in wet things happening there quite nicely. And that's the sort of thing that you easily get with oil paint and uh, not so easily with acrylic paint because usually even though we now have heavy bodied acrylic paints the paint comes off the brush onto the canvas in rather a thin sort of uh, application even though the paint has some body and people kind of squash it out don't they let's sort of do that uh, there's nothing on that just the paint itself and it's squishier and it's thinner but it's it, it's just not holding together as much as it does when you add the medium to it and you get that edge that you may not want it doesn't look as if you're painting wet in wet when you get that dry brush edge as you see it again here now it may be something that you do want on occasion but you're more likely to be wanting to have a a painting which uh, kind of merges the way oil paintings do dirty brush but I can merge this away to nothing quite easily. Just by coming around. Again, I'm trying to do things in a hurry. You, I think you can see I've got quite an amount of blue <laughs> still on my brush. But you, you can see the effect that I'm getting. I'm able to do Uh, a controlled edge there which if I'm over painting tends to look as if it's part of the painting that's underneath not something that's scraped over the top of it so anyway we'll stop the camera I think and I'll try to find something which already has some paint on the surface and I'll go over that and do some scraping back the way Elizabeth does. Get moving again. Well, as you can see, if, if you're using about half medium, half paint to get that gushy consistency, you're going to end up using a lot of this medium if you end up liking it. And it's probably very simple and comforting if it sits on your palette easy to get at you don't have to dig it out or anything or keep it in a bottle let's see what happens if I do a little scraping other Elizabeth She does a lot of this, doesn't she? And gets wonderful effects. And a very activated surface, which you, s you just can't get it any other way. So, scraping back's a great technique, in my humble opinion.
I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just making a coloured mess. I'm going to scrape through what's happening underneath. I know there's going to be something blue under this mud colour, don't I? I'm sure Elizabeth knows exactly what she's going to dig up when she does one of these scraping things. So, it's just as a very nice technique, but it's nice to have something happening underneath that you can dig through to, otherwise you just dig through to a white gesso board that looks as if you've missed, the, missed painting that part of it. Unless you uh, do what a lot of Aboriginal artists do and you work on a black gesso and you can have a black background everywhere, that can look pretty nice. All right, well, I think I've done enough of that. Now, I'll turn the camera off again for a second. I'm digging out some of our new regular gel, which simply will replace our existing one because it's so much nicer. And it has its surface sheen regulated so that it doesn't become shiny. Um, I'm looking for a different colour. So it doesn't become shiny when you apply it in certain places that sort of overwhelms the rest of the painting, which isn't shiny. Now you can see how, how nicely that thickens the paint up. Again, it's good to put it on with a knife. Pretty nice, isn't it? You mightn't want to use that everywhere. But I, I can see there being an, a nice connection between the looser consistency where you can do all that scraping back we've just been doing and this uh, very painterly look, which again you see a lot in uh, Elizabeth's painting. Or We also saw a corner of one of... Uh, of Ewan McLeod's paintings upstairs, didn't we? Which uh, again had a lot of texture going on. So texture has arrived with oil paint. Um, and if you want to know how long that takes to dry, don't ask me, please. I'm sure you know the thicker the paint is, the longer it will take to dry. So it's not going to be dry in 10 minutes, if that's your ambition. Um, but it will be dry a lot faster than an oil painting would get dry. And uh, you can keep going. So you haven't got to worry about the worries of layering that you have when you're doing an oil painting. And I think it's going to be pretty exciting. And. Uh, you can keep blending if you want to blend down in here for hours.